Well, good morning, Lionhearts. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. Well, today we are in front of the Colosseum here in Rome once again. But today we're actually going to the Roman Forum. Now, the reason that I'm so excited to do this one not only is because it's duh, the Roman Forum, but inside there is the Temple of Caesar, and that's where they had. Julius Caesar's burial. Well, not burial, but his, I guess you'd say his eulogy. Mark Antony gave his eulogy and they burned his body right there. And we're actually gonna go over and we're gonna see the spot where Caesar's body was burned, cremated. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. This is some crazy ground. You seriously gotta watch your step when you're walking around here. So let's take one good look at the other side of the Arch of Constantine we didn't see when we were here at the Colosseum, which is right there. And then we're gonna go into the uh, Palatine and the Roman Forum, as soon as I can find the easiest way in. And the tomb of Julius Caesar is actually in the Roman Forum. Did someone ask for bubbles? Not even in yet and we get this for free oh dude man every day just gets better and better I don't even I don't even know if I can pick a favorite day anymore the Roman Forum Well, basically today, like I said, we're gonna do the Palatine and the Roman Forum both, and inside the Roman Forum, we're gonna see the Temple of Julius Caesar. So, it's gonna be a pretty big vlog, guys. Pretty big. Did I just say blig? I meant big. So basically, this history goes back to like 5 BC in the Republican era, and that was, this whole area was basically a religious, commercial, Hangout. I mean, it was like it was pretty much everything. Here we are, friends. The Temple of Caesar, the great emperor. We're gonna go in here and see where his body was cremated and his eulogy was given, like I said, by Mark Antony. As most of you may know, or if you don't, Caesar was killed by a member of his peers, the other senators. And right here is where Caesar's body was supposedly cremated. And the reason that this temple is here is because Augustus wanted it here, and Augustus was the adopted son of Julius Caesar. So let's throw a coin in there. Vini Vidi Vici. The Grave of Caesar, truly one of the most epic graves I've ever been to, right up there with Clark Gable and Oscar Wilde and St. Peter. Julius Caesar. Now another name that they have for this Temple of Caesar is also the Temple of the Shooting Star because as crazy as it sounds, when they burned his body here, there was a shooting comet that went over the sky and they all believed that that was Caesar's spirit flying off into the heavens. There's a little proof. Assassinated in 44 BC. Now right here where his tomb is was originally six columns at the front and they were deco decorated with Rasta taken from 
uh, the ships of Anthony and Cleopatra captured by Augustus two years earlier. Now, like I mentioned, Augustus was the adopted son of Caesar, so you don't mess with the Caesar family. Now, it's said that many of the, the sites in this forum were kind of rediscovered in the 1700s. A lot of it had been covered over and buried over, and then they, of course, started digging around and started finding all kinds of history. Now, I know some may look at all this and just say it's all like rubble and broken buildings and it gets old, but you have to understand that at the time, Rome was everything. Rome was, it was the civilized world. If you weren't a Roman, you were a barbarian. So on both of these signs, you can see it's called Basilica Julia. And what it says is this was a another covered space to hold functions and it was actually uh, created by, well, begun by Julius Caesar in 54 BC. It was rebuilt by Augustus who dedicated it in 12 BC to Julius Caesar, hence Basilica Julia. That is one of the original four pillars that basically set the benchmarks at all four corners of the basilica. I mean, dude, seriously, we're standing where freaking Julius Caesar and Octavio Augustus stood, where they walked. Dang. This almost to me has the same feel as Pompeii, you know? Dare I say maybe even cooler than Pompeii because Pompeii is known for, you know, basically a disaster, whereas Many of the things that we we have today came from this civilization. In fact, the people in my uh, in my hostel last night we had a big discussion. We were just talking about how mind blown we were by how advanced they were. When um, one of the museums I went into Naples, it's the only museum I wasn't able to film anything. It was the Veiled Christ statue. They actually had a. They had two bodies in there that showed how the circulatory system worked. And we're sitting here to each other going, how did they know? Like, how did they experiment? How did they figure this stuff out? Who did they experiment on? You know, I think we know who they experimented on, but. Roma. Wow, look at this. Look at that. I love, I mean, I just love that arch style of the way they did the bricks. They would always have those arches there within bricks within. It's crazy, but you know what? That's one of those things I was just mentioning, the, the advancement of how advanced they were. When I was in high school, I took shop class, and one of the things we had to do is we had to, we were given certain materials like popsicle sticks, and index cards, like a certain amount of glue, all this stuff, and you had to figure out how to make the most stable bridge you could so that you could hang a piece of string with a weight on it and see how well it could hold. Even then, they understood, we learned in that class, that by putting basically a roof structure or an arch, it created a strength to it. And they knew that even then. We have a lot to work through, so let's go, gang. Look, there's the remains of a statue right there. This is more of the Basilica Julia that you hadn't got to see yet. Different angle. I'm actually working my way up the hill because I want to get right up here. Now over here is actually where we're working our way to. That's the Temple of Saturn. But imagine being an archaeologist and digging around and all of a sudden you just start finding this kind of stuff. That's got to be the mother load, doesn't it? So here's kind of a map of it all. We've only been like in this section right here. So we have a lot to see. We want to get to the house of Augustus over here. Look, there's one that still stands. It's got a kind of a warrior on the back of a horse with a shield. Well, here's what's left of the Temple of Saturn. It's one of the most ancient temples in all of Rome. Let's go take a look. And we're what's called Capitoline Hill. 
Now it doesn't say it here, but I read online that it was originally called something else. I want to say it was originally called the Temple of Nero or something like that, but Augustus had it changed to making it the Temple of Saturn. So as you can tell, it would have actually kind of wrapped all the way around here. Actually would have had a, uh, an adjoining piece right there. You can still see some of the writing at the very top on both pieces. Sorry, it's so backlit. I never thought I'd be at the Roman Forum seeing signs that said, pardon our mess because they're doing construction. <laughs> now this beautiful structure is the Temple of Vesasian. This was actually built in 79 AD by Titus and Domitian for their father, Vespasian, who was once the emperor here. You can see the stairs going down in. It would have been all of this. One time this was the hub of it all. One of the most bustling city centers. One of the greatest in all of history. So this sign says that this is basically a uh, sacred space that contained the altar dedicated to Vulcan by Titus. Wow. Check out how advanced that is. I mean, that's clearly what they had to have got the inspiration for the Arch of Constantine from, right? And that's kind of why I showed you that at the beginning of the vlog. If this doesn't say it, I don't know what will. Look at all the statues and the fountain. Oh, beautiful. Look at all that. And that you can tell right over there, that all used to be painted. So you can tell they clearly they have those two pillars right there, but then they bookended the sides of this house with two statues, because you can see the other one right there. I guarantee those fish weren't there. There's a well. These would have all been shops right over here, of course. Let's go take a look at this guy, huh? So this is called the Temple of Romulus, and this was built by um, Emperor Maxentius, and it was in honor of his son who died when he was a child. Take these stairs up. So this section right here actually used to be homes, but they said after the fire of 64 AD, they turned this whole part of the city into shops with these long walls. Are those? So this was actually a museum, even in that time. And the palace was right up here, where you see that pillar, the palace went up that was the front of the palace right there, originally. Now this is called the Crypt of Neromaniano. So right here is a kind of a grotto that you would have passed going down the hill that they used to keep statues in. You can still see some of the decoration right up along here. This was all part of the royal palace I just showed you. 
What is that, a toe or a thumb? So this section right here used to be full of pink pillars and it was kind of a hangout area and there was a there was actually like a fountain and everything here and if you saw my Vatican vlog when I was in the Vatican Museum I do go past one of the paintings and you would have seen it would have been circular pillars going around the center and they would have all been pink and here you can still see some of the original marble that white right there and then I don't know exactly what that is, but that's all blue glass of some sort. And it's kind of everywhere in there. So these were actually part of the Palace of Domitian. And they said they, they were able to find accounts of him loving to walk around these porticos in particular around the palace. Can you imagine that? Fountains and shrubbery mazes and pink pillars, a pool, how beautiful. So this area right here is called the House of Two Griffins and when we went up that staircase that was actually the staircase to enter here and it says that this was a house dating back to second to first century BC. It said part of it was destroyed um, once again like everything was but it said uh, on the ground floor a few remains of the atrium with the pool and colored mosaic survive. So somewhere in there there would have been a pool. Wow. Let's see what this is. So what you're looking at right now, my friends, this is what you would have called, or what I would call, basically the rich people's neighborhood. This was all the palaces and the well-to-do. Look at the various kinds of marble over there. Holy cow! Oh man, I just walked around the corner and saw this and I was like, oh, look at that. Look how ornate that is. You can tell how awesome that would have been back then. Now it's got, maybe it would have been rippled back then. I don't know. I think that if this is what I think it is, that's kind of, it's going to be the end of it. That's, we're looking for one thing. So we're going to the house of Augustus and then if you made it all the way through this video I have a little payoff for you because I'm going to go back to something that we started with. So right here was the former site of the Temple of Apollo crowned by Augustus. So this section over here was outside of Augustus house, it was called the Sanctuary of Augustus. Well, I made it up to the highest point so I could show you guys an overview. Well, this is the Arch of Titus, built in 71 AD, and it's the oldest one out here, apparently. <laughs> the walls of the empire. This is the Basilica of Constantine. And you know, it's kind of crazy. I wish I would have mentioned it in the video when we were at the Colosseum, but the Pope leads a, a march from in front of the Colosseum. So I wish I would have mentioned that when I was there. We're headed back this way, back to where we began, back to the Roman Forum for a little Roman holiday. That's the Domus Tiberiano, or Tiberiana. Yeah. 
So we're back here to end the vlog at the Temple of Saturn. And I'm sure a lot of you that are Roman holiday fans were screaming saying, why didn't you say Princess Anne was asleep on the bench right here and that's where Gregory Peck found her? Well, I'm saying it now. You have to wait to the end of the video for some of this stuff sometimes. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, it was right there. I'm not getting great reception right here, so I can't really match it up. But I was trying to remember in my brain that it was right in between these columns here, so. There you go. Hope you're happy. <laughs> there you go, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the Roman Forum and the fancy city part of it. So that's where they used to play dice. And now we're going to call it a day. Well, Lionhearts, from the Roman Forum, have a great night. See y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.